Are you thinking of moving from there to here to Edmonton? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about the 20 things you got to know before you move here. So stay tuned. What's up, everyone? This is Eric Yip. I'm a local real estate agent. And if you're new to my channel, I'll be talking about everything about sleeping, eating, drinking, working, playing in Edmonton. So make sure you smash that like button and please subscribe. So when I do make future videos, you won't miss out. The other thing is I, I have so many people calling me when they're moving to Edmonton for help. So if you're ever moving here, text me, call me, email me, even fax me if you want. And I'd love to help you out. Anyways, let's get started. So first thing you got to know is in Edmonton, we don't have to pay PST or HST. So what that means is you, when it comes to a big ticketed item, um, that's where you're going to save thousands of dollars. Imagine you want to buy that Mercedes, that brand new Mercedes or your brand new Ferrari or an Audi or Audi. I don't know how you say it. Audi, Audi. I guess, depending on where you're from. Some people say Audi, some people say Audi. Anyways, going back to where we're talking about. So if you want to buy a brand new vehicle, you're definitely gonna save. The other thing is, if you're thinking of building a brand new home, well, guess what? You gotta pay GST on that too, or taxes. So if you're just paying GST and you don't have to pay PST or HST, that is going to save you a ton of money. Oh, you know what? A couple months ago, I bought one of these new phones. And what's the average price of a phone these days? I don't know, a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred dollars. It is so expensive. So you're definitely going to save because you don't have to pay PST or HST. And that's one thing that attracts a lot of people to move to Edmonton. Uh, number two, the city of Edmonton has really grown over the years and I believe our population is hovering around uh, 1.3 million, 1.4 million years ago when I moved back to Edmonton. We're talking a long time ago. I believe our population was at about um, uh, half a million and I sure have noticed the difference today versus back then where, where you're gonna notice is there's a lot more traffic on the road uh, there's definitely a lot more people in restaurants and parks and uh, but to me I think it's a good thing for our city to grow um, instead of not growing. Number three, to get around in Edmonton the addresses, uh, we do have some names but most of the time it's with a numeric system. It's actually super easy. I remember when I first came back to Edmonton and I was driving I got so confused, but it's actually super easy once you know. So the rule of thumb is if you're going from south to the north, the uh, avenues get larger. And if you go from east all the way to the west, the numbers get larger again. So hopefully that really helps you out when you try to navigate and get around town. Number four. Uh, there's actually a lot of really cool places where the shopping and the restaurants are clustered together. So for example, if you look on the south side in a place like South Edmonton Mall, um, or no, South Edmonton Common, um, they have all the restaurants there, they have grocery stores, uh, they have super, uh, they have Ikea, they have uh, the brick, um, they have a uh, future store if you want to buy your video games and TV and, and all the different gadgets, computers and all that. Um, they also have uh, other restaurants, uh, a lot of restaurants around there. They also have some entertainment. There's a place called The Rec Room. So if you want to go play uh, some table tennis, they have axe throwing. It's very, very cool. They have um, bowling. And, uh, and they also have uh, arcade games uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing is right close to the rec room, there's also an indigo. So if you love books and you love reading, that's where you wanna go. Uh, there's also, a, if you get tired of that, there's also a theater around there. Um, and uh, so at the end of the day, 
you want to take your girlfriend or boyfriend on a date and you go want to go have some popcorn um, with extra butter and watch your favorite movie that's where you want to go number five i remember when i moved back here years ago i got my license when i was in my 20s and driving here was so scary because there were a lot more vehicles on the road of course everything's relative if you're coming from a larger city where you're used to the traffic and you're used to driving it's obviously not very scary but i remember i was moving back from winnipeg where the city was smaller uh, i just got my license and yeah driving here was super scary for me i remember before we had the ring road um, i'm pretty sure i wouldn't have taken the ring road back then but what we did have was the white mud freeway and the speed limit there was 80 kilometers an hour to get from where i lived on the south to even go to West Edmonton Mall, it was so scary. How to merge onto it, how to get off of it, how to change lanes, oh, it's scary. But now, it's easy peasy. Number six, I remember when I moved back to Edmonton from Winnipeg, uh, one thing I did notice was a lot of the vehicles were actually a lot newer. And uh, same thing with the construction these days, we have a lot of newer buildings. But yeah, one of the most significant things were that uh, uh, vehicles were newer and I thought, oh my gosh, is everyone that wealthy here in Edmonton? Well, maybe we are. Uh, also, there are a lot more restaurants compared to some of the smaller cities. Of course, if you're coming from Vancouver or Toronto, they have a lot more restaurants compared to what we have here. But you know what? For the size of Edmonton, we've got a good variety here and it's actually not too bad. Number seven, we have a lot of construction and newer construction in Edmonton, which actually makes it very, very alive and modern and nice. Uh, when you go downtown, there's a lot of newer construction for apartments, uh, residential apartments. There's also newer buildings uh, for commercial, uh, whether it be the commercial or residential downtown. There's a lot of these new high rises that are um, 30, 40, 50, even 60 stories high. It is so high, it is crazy, but it is pretty awesome also. Uh, also, if you look at new residential uh, construction, there's actually a lot of new homes being built uh, yearly. So if you love new buildings, you're definitely gonna notice that. Uh, a lot of those areas, I, I'm noticing that a lot of the younger uh, generation they want that new home uh, they want a home that no one's ever lived in they want to feel and live in a, a, an environment where it, it feels like a nice community some places actually have a nice clubhouse um, and one area actually has a little bit of a lake and people actually love it there number eight the weather we actually have four seasons here uh, summer spring and autumn is awesome however in winter I'm not a big winter person because it is so darn long here um, and when it does get cold you do get the minus 20 minus 30s even minus 40s and it does get cold um, especially with with the wind chill oh it's terrible so you got to make sure you bring your toques and your mitts and your gloves well make sure you bundle up gotta bring your toque there and my scarf and my mitts all right i'm ready for winter the only thing over here, when it does snow, it actually doesn't handcuff our city. Our city is very well prepared. We've got graders, we've got snow plows, um, and majority of the time, within 24 to 48 hours, the snow is removed. So if you're thinking of skipping school or work, good luck, because you're going to work and you're going to school. Number nine, although we're not close to the ocean here, we have a lot of greenery here. We have trees, we have grass, we have mountains. And if you love hiking, you love the outdoors, 
Edmonton is definitely the place to be. We have a lot of that. Um, I remember years ago when I was uh, walking around in our uh, city, even downtown, we do have trees there. Uh, trees didn't just show up there by itself. They didn't grow there by itself. The city actually planted them there. And it just, it makes the city feel so much nicer when we have some sort of greenery there. Um, and I absolutely love seeing uh, nature, the trees and all of that. Uh, so make sure you take advantage of that during summer. Winter time when it's long, don't always see the trees. Well, you do see the trees, except they're all covered in snow. Uh, but during um, springtime, summertime, even autumn time, it's just beautiful here. Number 10. If you have furry friends, make sure you bring them here because people love their furry friends in Edmonton myself included. I remember years ago, I actually had three cats. The three Himalayans, they're the ones with the pushing nose and lots and lots and lots of hair. Um, and then I never had any dogs and I wanted to get a dog. So I got the biggest dog I could find. There's a, a, a Great Pyrenees. It was probably about 110, 120 pounds. Uh, it was all white and fluffy. It looked like a big polar bear and I loved him. He was about five years old. Uh, I think I might have been his third or fourth owner. And it was sad because I remember the first week when I walked him, he was so afraid of people either in uniform or people with a hat or a turban or something like that. And I'm wondering if one of his previous owners abused him or something like that. He was also very, very scared of water. And whenever we had a storm, he was so afraid of thunder. He would actually hide underneath the bed. At the time, I actually had a big sleigh, um, king size bed where he could crawl underneath. But boy, I tell you, I, 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 I felt so sad for him. And I actually let him onto the bed and sleep with him. And of course, if you never had such a big dog before, uh, he would actually dream and he dreamt that he would be running. So when he extended his feet, it would kick my feet and boy, it woke me up and I was in so much pain, but I loved it. He was, um, he was such a good boy, loved him. Uh, smart boy also, I remember I had a futon before and he was pretty smart because every time I left home, he would sleep and lay on the futon as if it were his. The second I came home, he slowly crawled off as if he wasn't there. It was the funniest scene ever. Uh, and the next dog I had was a Border Collie, little little black Border Collie, Keyshawn Cross, the, the tail kind of curled. Um, she was very, very cute. I got her when she was very, very young. At the time, uh, I remember going to the SPCA also, and the girl said, oh, I'm so glad you got him. And I said, why? Well, we were thinking of putting her down the next day, and I go, oh, thank goodness, I'm picking her up. The only thing is, she did have another, uh, she had a brother. They're in the same cage. It wasn't until a week later that it dawned on me that I thought, oh my gosh, how come I didn't save the brother also? He was so cute also. Hopefully, another family adopted him. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, I still think of that every now and then. My third dog was actually another Pyrenees, but I got him when he was a puppy. And the reason why I got him was because I got my little black dog to play with the big dog, but the, the big dog didn't want to play with the little dog. And I thought, well, maybe because they're not of the same breed, they don't want to really want, want to play with each other. So I got the third one. Um, and the puppy grew and grew until it was the size of the big one. They actually did play. I love them all dearly. Um, and I actually no longer have them. I, I believe they're probably all in doggy heaven and cat heaven. Uh, but anyways, going back to your pets. Uh, if you do bring your pets here, we have a lot of off-leash parks here. Uh, people just love their pets. Uh, so make sure you bring your pets. Number 11. If you love beef and steak, that we have lots of it here. Triple A Alberta beef. Oh, guys, I love steak. Throw it on the barbecue, medium rare, a little bit of pink on the inside, 
and some baby carrots, some garlic mashed potato, a garden or a Caesar salad with some barbecue sauce, some horseradish. Oh, I remember when I was younger, I never really liked horseradish, but as I got older, I absolutely love it. I, 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 it just, it, it just really complements uh, the, the steak and it brings out the, the, the flavor. Oh, it's making me so hungry right now. Maybe I should have steak for lunch or something like that. Anyways, moving on to the next. Uh, number 12. Did you know that we actually have a lot of casinos in Edmonton? I believe we have the highest per capita uh, in the country. People in Alberta, no, I should say in Edmonton, people love gambling, people love entertaining. So if you love blackjack, they're the ones where you play cards up to uh, 21 without busting. People like the, the one with the dice, what's that called, craps. Um, and then there's also the one with uh, the little ball that goes around the wheel, roulette. Uh, people absolutely love their gambling here. Um, usually on Friday or Saturday nights, the casinos will host like a, a live entertainment, whether it be a live band, uh, people can, can dance there. Uh, they usually have a buffet um, uh, that's fairly reasonable um, to attract you to go and uh, gamble there and uh, just spend your night and spend all your money there. That is what they want to do. Uh, so if you love gambling, this is where pretty much you can go anywhere. There's a lot of casinos in Edmonton. Let's do some gambling. Let's bet all of it. One card for me and one for the dealer. Let's see what we have. Eight. The dealer has a 10. 15. Hit me. 20. Yeah. 21. No. Wah, wah, wah. Number 13. People in Edmonton love their coffee. More specifically, their Timmy's, their Tim Hortons coffee. And it's not to say that we don't have Starbucks or Second Cup or your um, little independent coffee shops, but most people love their coffee here. They want to order that Double Double, which is a, a two cream, two sugar. Uh, regulars, we have one cream, one sugar. Um, you can get a triple triple um, and I, I wonder if there's a quadruple quadruple I'm sure there's someone who wants four sugars and four creams, but you know what's the worst? I mean the best The iced cappuccinos. They're so good, but they're so bad and you know what? It's making me so thirsty. I think I'm gonna go get one right now. Be right back Can I order something? Hi, welcome to the Hi, can I get a large ice cap please? A large ice cap? Correct. And can you put, instead of your regular amount of cream, can you put maybe three quarters? Three quarters of the cream? Correct. And also, can you, what size? Regular. Can regular. I get a regular coffee with one cream and one sugar, please? What size? Uh, just the medium. Medium, one cream, one sugar. You got it. Okay. And that's it. All right. Drive up, please. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Number 14. Edmonton is actually the city capital of Alberta. I know Calgary always thinks that they are, but they are not. It's Edmonton. We're the better city. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, Calgary's not bad too, but Edmonton's way better. Number 15, that leads me to pro sports. So Edmonton and Calgary always has a friendly rivalry and they're the enemy. They're our nemesis, um, whether it comes to sports or, or, you know, which is the better city. Um, who's got better culture and people and food and everything. Edmonton, obviously, but like I said, Calgary's not bad too. Go down there once in a while and it is nice. Um, anyways, going back to the professional sports, we do have professional sports here. Uh, of course, hockey's big here. We have the Edmonton Oilers. Love the Oilers. Um, awesome team. In the last two years, we haven't been doing that good. But you know what? Still love them. Every year, if we lose to any other team, 
we must beat the Calgary Flames. It is a must. Then we have CFL football, uh, the Edmonton Eskimos, go Eskies, and versus um, the Calgary Stampeders. So we definitely want, we, we have a lot of sports here. Uh, we also have soccer. Women's soccer definitely getting pretty big here. We also have lacrosse, and I believe we also have baseball, and oh, we even have basketball here. So if you're into sports, we have we have sports here. Number 16. We actually have a new ring road in Edmonton. Uh, it was put in quite a few years ago, and before we had that, to get from the north to the south or south to the north, you would actually have to drive through uh, the city, and it could take you anywhere from 45 to an hour. And now that we have the ring road, it's actually cut the time in half. So um, definitely make sure you take advantage of that. And what's really cool is we actually don't have a toll. So what that means is doesn't matter how many times you take the ring road, you don't have to pay anything to drive around. You can go zoom, one, two, three, four, as many times you want without paying anything. How cool is that? Number 17, people in Edmonton are actually very, very friendly and we're, we're nearly overly polite to a fault. Um, I remember, I think it was a couple, couple weeks ago, uh, I accidentally bumped into someone at the grocery store. Instead of me apologizing, right away they turned around and they apologized to me as if it were their fault because I bumped into them. Uh, but you know what? I, I love it that people are friendly. It's better than being not friendly. Number 18. We have the West Edmonton Mall. It's actually one of the biggest malls. Um, it's not the biggest, but it's definitely one of the biggest um, in North America and the world. Uh, it, to me, it, it, it's plenty big. It's big enough. Um, what's really cool about uh, the mall is uh, they have restaurants there, they've got shopping. Uh, one of the main attractions is they actually we have a pirate ship there. It's very, very cool. Um, and there is a tavern uh, under the water where I think there's some aquatic animals or something like that. And also, I remember seeing penguins walking in the mall. That was very, very cool. Not sure if we have that anymore. We also have uh, seals and uh, they, we even used to have dolphins. But you know what? For dolphins, I do feel that they should be in the ocean. Just to doesn't matter how big of a place it is, for to, to keep them in a, in a in a small aquarium, if you will, might be a little bit cruel. But anyways, that's another story. Um, what else do we have at the at the mall? Oh yes, when you go to the mall, they actually have uh, a Fantasyland hotel. Uh, they've got a couple of other hotels surrounding the mall. So if you want to. Um, be close to the mall when you come here to visit and do your shopping definitely a place to go and then you can rest at the hotels a lot of restaurants oh the other thing is we also have a big water park there um, they have a wave pool they've got multiple different slides and also they have a bungee jump there um, and it's actually pretty cool I've gone there a couple times myself and it was a lot of fun so if you want to come here with your family and friends definitely a place to check out uh, now in the West Edmonton Mall, there's generally two places, one on the uh, one end and then one on the other for your food court. So after you're done shopping and you get a little bit hungry, that's where you want to go to get a little food to replenish. Uh, number 19. Edmonton is known as um, festival city in my opinion. We have so many festivals here. Uh, we have the folk festival, music festival, we even have food festival here, uh, heritage days, um, uh, and then we also in summertime we have uh, K-Days. Oh I love K-Days when I was a kid. I remember there's cotton candy, um, you can play all those little games to win prizes. Oh it was so much fun. Um, and other than that um, Oh yeah, they had all those different roller coasters and different rides, the thriller rides, 
and you go there for like two, three, four days just to win a couple prizes. And then, oh, you know the ones with the the, the fishing uh, line and then you had to make sure there was a ring at the bottom and you had, I forget what it was, whether it was a bottle or something and you had to fish up the, was it the bottle or something anyways? Um, and yeah, those were the good old days. 20. You need to know your quadrants in Edmonton. So if you look at Edmonton, I'm going to show you the map right here. Uh, so if you look over here, you have the EIA, which is the Edmonton International Airport. When you take Highway 2 and you come up north, the first place you're going to hit is uh, Ellerslie Road, or you're going, to, you're going to see the Ring Road right around here. It's called the Anthony and the Drive. And if you actually keep driving and keep staying in your leftmost lane, I believe, you're actually going to hit uh, the ring road. So actually what you want to do is stay a little bit more to the right side so you can actually hit the city of Edmonton. Now when you come into Edmonton, there's basically uh, different quadrants. Number one, you've got the southeast part of Edmonton. You have the southwest part of Edmonton. You have the west part of Edmonton. And over here, if you hit this right here is Gateway Boulevard, it will actually hit um, the White Mud Freeway. Uh, years ago, before the, the Ring Road, we only, had the, we only had the White Mud Freeway. So to get from the south side to West Edmonton Mall, you could only take uh, the Yellowhead. Nowadays, if you want, don't want to take that, you can actually take um, uh, the Ring Road, the Anthony Henday. Timeline wise, I'm gonna say it's probably about the same, but of course it depends on where you live uh, that it might be a little bit quicker. Then um, over here you have Highway 14 uh, and then when it cuts into Edmonton, um, it actually is called the Yellowhead Freeway right here. Okay, so if you want to get from the west to the east or east to the west uh, on the upper two thirds of uh, Edmonton, that is what you would take. The next thing you need to know is uh, here is Edmonton downtown over here. Um, and right in Edmonton, you have 101 Avenue, which is also called Jasper Avenue. You can see it right here. So it's gonna hit through downtown Oliver, uh, Jasper, and then when it hits 124th Street, uh, if you wanna keep going west, you, uh, you can take multiple routes. Uh, you can take 102nd Avenue, might be the quickest. You can take 107th Avenue. Uh, definitely um, wanna remember that. And then the other thing is in Edmonton, um, just south of Edmond, uh, south of the downtown, you have 82nd Avenue right here. Okay, which is also called uh, White Mud Free, uh, White Mud. No, not White Mud, I beg your pardon. I meant White Avenue. And over here, you have the University of Alberta. And in general, if you look at the city of Edmonton map here, uh, most of the suburbia and newer construction is gonna be on the uh, exterior of Edmonton, of, of uh, the Ring Road, I beg your pardon. And you have a lot of newer construction here right along Ellerslie Road, same thing over here, Windermere, Ambleside, same thing with the West End. The only exception is when you hit the North Side. In the North Side, uh, just on the inside interior of the Ring Road, that's where you're going to see a lot of the, the newer construction. And of course, surrounding Edmonton, uh, up here you have St. Albert, uh, and then you have Spruce Grove, Stony Plain, Atchison, um, and, and then over to the east, you have Sherd Park. There's another little place actually called Fort Saskatchewan. And also uh, to the south of Edmonton, there's another little town called Beaumont. And lastly, you also have another little town called Leduc surrounding Edmonton. So most people, uh, when they do move to Edmonton, here's definitely some places um, and how to get around and, and what you need to know about Edmonton. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out.